gave it all, Lord, and we really want to give everything to you, Jesus. Lord, we love you so much. We just pray over this day, Lord, just for boldness, the filling of the Holy Ghost, discernment. Keep us from the evil one. Keep us, uh, provide for us our daily bread, Lord God. Bring your kingdom to the earth, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. We lift up the name of Jesus that all men will be drawn to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
still hooked up, bud? It's acting like it's in here. Cut yours off. Get it. it only, yeah, we turn done. it off. It only lets us do one until we spend this extra money to buy a license. Big off. Yeah. So in our books, we're we're still in tab three. We're going into part two, a walk of spirit, walk of power. We're transitioning in from part one to part two, and we're doing a little three-page insert that I put in there, a little extra, as Josh says, and uh, extra pits, three pages. And, uh, we're, we're on tab, tab three. You'll see it says hearing God's voice. Right. Hearing God's voice. So walk the spirit, walk the power part two. And then we're transitioning into hearing God's voice. Some of those things we brought up yesterday. Um, you know, that things that prevent us from hearing God's voice. I would almost like to relate that, correlate that to quenching the spirit, yeah. right? So, yeah. you know, we're we're praying, we're 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 in position, right, where we're supposed to be. And I, I mean, how many of you ever experienced this? Like, we're just killing it. You're here, hey, Christopher. He's a married man. Hey, hey, hey. hey man, sorry. So, um, and you're just you're like you're you're stepping up on the scene, and God's like speaking to you, and He's showing you stuff, and but then you get into worry. You got a financial issue, and you know you, you're literally choosing to focus on that instead of God's provision. And the next thing you know, that it consumes your mind. Like, how am I going to meet this need? How am I going to pay this? Or how am I going to get Christmas for the kids? And we and that and that worry becomes an idol over the voice of God, and we quench the spirit. Why? Because we're we're not paying attention to it. We're paying attention to our own fear, our own worry. Same thing with strife. Like when you remember how you like get in it with somebody, like it's heated all day long. If you're not careful, you're thinking about what you could have said. Man, if they do that again, right? I mean, come on. How many people have been there? And really, it's it, so it's not this big, huge mystery. I mean, it's pretty. Yeah. I think all of us have been there in a point in time. Like where where can we get? How can we get to a place where if something comes up? Because that, that is literally, because we don't war against flesh or blood. That is literally the, has anybody ever seen that cartoon Inside Out with a little girl that plays hockey and they, they got the red guy who's anger and they got the girl the joy if you got little kids and they're like pushing these buttons and making memories and you have disgust, all these different things. Well, that's kind of like the enemy. And he's just, he's up there and he's trying to pull our strings and he's trying to puppet us. And put things in our... He might not be able to control us because we're born again and got the Holy Spirit. But he might be able to control the guy driving in traffic and cutting us off. Mm -hmm. Right? He might have complete control of that guy. So he's just, man, he wants to quench the voice of God. Because the voice of God equals his perfect plan. Mm -hmm. And we're... It's interesting that you went there because we're transitioning into this final page on hearing God's voice. And it's talking about honoring God, right? And one of the number one principles in communication with the Father is honor. Mm. Is honor, right? 
And to honor God means to honor His Word. Because He is Word. That's right. What does that mean? I give the Word first place. If He says be anxious for nothing, you know. Now, am I going to struggle with that? Probably. Just like Josh said, you know, the cares of the world, all these different things begin to bombard us. And we're learning how to cast those cares on the Lord. We're learning how to cast down those thoughts and those imaginations and those emotions that are contrary to God's word. And by doing that, I'm honoring God and I'm giving his word first place. And when I do that, I don't quench the spirit. I work with the spirit. I flow with the spirit. And then that peace is able to come. And the peace of God, it can be compared to the voice of God. Mm-hmm. Right? He's put on Colossians, peace. Yeah. Put it on. Right. In Colossians 3, it says, let the peace of God rule in your heart like an umpire. Right? What does an umpire do? He calls the shots. Right? But if I've got no peace, then I, I'm not going to be able. It's just constant turmoil. You know, if I have strike and somebody, they cut me off in traffic, and now I'm chasing them down the interstate, off the exit, <laughs> I've got my pistol on my seat now. That's the whole thing. I don't do that no more. But, um, you know, and then all day long, you're thinking about, and you're going to call somebody, you're not going to believe what this dude just did in traffic. You know, yeah. the next thing you know, it's all day long, you know, um, but little things like that where we allow the enemy to come in, you know, and, and take that peace away from us. Mm-hmm. I know that's something that I struggle with more than anything else. Just not letting things get me irritated. I'm so irritated. It's just an instant over nothing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but I struggle with that more than anything else in my life. Yeah. You want to go back to? Yes. Yeah. I've been uh, going to a counselor, you know, a Christian counselor. He's a doctor. And, you know, he's kind of like identifying some strengths I have. And one of my strengths is I'm a list maker. He's like, well, dude, sit down and write a list out. Like, put that thing down on paper. Like, what bothers you? And then take some scripture and write it beside it. Like, this is what you're doing. This is how you're acting, which you know is monkey. And then here's some scripture, what God says. Sometimes, you know, some practical... Simplicity. Yeah, simplicity of some things. And that way I'm like, okay, so now i got that thing fresh in my heart. His word, which is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, that does what? It divides asunder. It, cut, it mortifies, it cuts off that junk and that mess. So I'm like, okay, man, it's been working for me. Like, somebody will say something or something will happen like that, and I'll... I'll and, and it's so cool because the Holy Spirit's like, okay, here's your choice. Yeah. Yeah. The word that I just read, fresh, or I could choose to be this. And I'm like, man, I want to, because I love you, I'll yeah. choose your word first. And man, it is, I've been killing it. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's look Don't at that. Don't tell me later. Don't tell me. <laughs> kind of like the, the direction, it's cool because it's the direction that um, I believe the Lord wants to go in today in uh, Second Timothy. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 2, let's read verses 20 through, let's go 22 for right now. 2 Timothy 2, 20 through 22. Now, I definitely recommend for a lot of you guys, and I believe you guys are called into leadership, to go back and read. These are, these are considered the pastoral epistles. Right, so these are like leadership epistles. So just go back and, and check out, you know, in addition to what we're reading for this class, we're reading First Corinthians for this present class. But go back and when you have some time and read uh, First and Second Timothy and Titus, and just really see what some of these qualifications for leadership are. Because you'll see a lot of these things that are in here that the qualification for leadership, it'll look a little bit different than what we've seen in the past. Sometimes People were like, well, what about when this guy did this? And what about when this pastor did this? And what about when they said that? You know, and I'm just like, you know, you can't really, a lot of times God will show us what's not to show us what is. You know, and I can't base, I can't base what God's doing in my life off of what someone else is doing. I've got to base what God wants to do in my life off the Word. Yeah, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right, at the end of the day, I've got to go back and say, How's my life? How's my life supposed to line up? Not like, well, my pastor did this or he said that. Well, he's he's wrong. Right. Yeah. 
Right. If it's not lining up with the word, that's why it's important. Like we tell y'all, even going back to what Josh just said, Ephesians 6 says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Right. So this is an offensive weapon that I have against the enemy. Well, guess what? If I don't have this word in my heart, if I don't know this word, when the enemy comes in or when that choice comes, I'm not going to, I'm not really going to know what my options are. You're going to have a baseline. Right. You're not going to, you know, yeah. In order to wield that sword of the spirit, I need to have that relationship in the word. So when that thing comes against me, I know what the word says that's contrary to that. That's going to blast that thing down. Right? So that's why it's important. Get, get in the word every day. Spend time in the word. You know, even if it's just a chapter a day, just get that word inside of you. And you'll have that sword available when the time comes. So today we're talking about honor and really to honor God. He says he, he honors those that honor him. Right? So to honor God means to honor his word. So let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses, cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. So watch this. Who in here wants to be a vessel of dishonor? Like a peapot. Anybody? Uh -uh. I don't. Uh -uh. I want to be a vessel of honor. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's my choice whether I'm a vessel of dishonor or a vessel of honor. That's right. If I choose to honor God's word, right? If I choose to put off the old man, the old ways of thinking, the old ways of reacting, right? Then God's going to honor that. If I, put his, if I give his word first place, like what Josh was just talking about, his situation, <coughs> then God's going to honor that. He's going to bring promotion. Yeah. And we're gonna He's going to set you aside for his purpose. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Set you aside for the master's use. Amen. That's, right. That's what we want, right? Yep. The way I've always seen it, he's talking about these vessels. Now, what he wants to do with these vessels is fill them to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Pour the spirit out on the earth through those yeah, yeah. Man, that's funny you say that because that's a strong word that I've been getting lately. Very strong in prayer. And that's pour pour yourself out that he could fill you up. And that just keeps coming uh, rep repetitively in, in my prayer language. Uh, pour yourself out. Almost like an interpretation. Pour yourself out that I could f continue to fill you up. And it's, that's been a strong yeah. word. You know, don't stop the flow because it's it, it, when you dam up a river, the water gets stagnant. So you want to flow. Mm -hmm. Keep going. That's right. Keep pouring in, keep pouring out. Amen. That's good. A vessel of honor. Look at 21. It says, if anyone cleanses himself, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work useful us right in other words put off the old man and put on the new man that's created in righteousness and holiness God is not going to force us to do this like Josh just said Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman mm -hmm. he's going to say look like he told like God told Cain he said sin's crouching at the door what you going to do mm -hmm. choose life or death that's right We've got to put it on every day. It's a constant decision that we make every day. You know, that's why it's so important. We're, we're, we're really encouraging you guys in ourselves, secret place, secret place, secret place, because the more time we spend in the secret place and the more that spirit man gets built up, the more power we're going to have over the flesh, the more power we're going to have over the emotions. But if we're, never, if we're not spending any time, man, our, our spirit man is going to be depleted. You know, when the flesh wants to, to rip somebody's head off or, or you know, give somebody a piece of our mind, we're not going to have any power to, to really come against that and give us the power over that, right? So, secret place in the Word is really where it's at as far as 
you know, being a vessel of honor and being able to step into those, those right choices and those right decisions and allowing God to use us to be that vessel of honor. Yeah. Amen. I, I know that when I'm not dwelling in the secret place, I'm dwelling in negativity, I'm dwelling in worry, I'm dwelling in fear. So whenever I get in that situation, God's like, dwell in the secret place, don't dwell on that. Because my mind will be like a broken record just yeah. on the same thought over and over until I get constantly that bringing, me in. Yeah. Get out of that. Constantly bringing those thoughts back in line, yeah. like you know, Second Corinthians 10, 3-5. The weapons of our warfare aren't carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. You know, casting down thoughts, oh. imagination, yeah. voices, anything that's contrary to God's word, casting them down and bringing them into what? Obedience of Christ or obedience yeah. to the word. And that's how we become really a vessel of honor. And look, as, we, as God begins to increase our capacity, we were talking about that yesterday, how God, you know, increased the, the capacity of Jesus. As we begin to step out and only do what we hear him saying and see him doing, then that capacity is going to increase yeah. and we're going to, that voice is just going to be crystal clear. Prominent, yeah. Um, all right, so on our page, the first principle, like I said, to hearing God's voice and communication is honor, right? So let's look at Matthew 6, 9 through 13. And Josh, this came up yesterday. You mentioned it a couple times, and even today. And I think it's powerful. This is this is considered. This is the model prayer. This is where Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting? Like we said yesterday, out of all the things they could have asked Jesus mm -hmm. to teach them or show them, they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray yeah. because they knew that the things that He was walking in, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the wisdom. All the things that he walked in was a result of yeah. his prayer life. And I'm sure <clears throat> that came up in conversation because he was always dipping out. You know what I'm saying? Like he would dip out, come back, crazy stuff would happen. Mm -hmm. He would dip out and they're like, Lord, where are you going? He's like, okay, come here, I'll show you. And he goes up to the Mount of Transfiguration and, bah! you know, they're like, okay, we're getting what the guy's doing now. You know what I'm saying? So that's here's this scene and they're like, boom, Lord. Yeah. 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 Another thing to think about why the enemy comes against praying in the spirit so adamantly because of the impact and the fruit that it produces. Amen. That's why you see people, they just come. I mean, like, this is praying in the spirit is probably like one of the most controversial, you know, issues that people have in the church. And a lot of times, what it is, it's people, brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ, coming against that. Just. And it's like, this person is, he, he's praying, like he's got, he, he's producing fruit in his life. He's walking in love, like whatever he's doing is working. Why come against it? Well, my condition says this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the thing too. I was telling this somebody yesterday because they were like, well, that doesn't mean I don't love Jesus. I'm like, whoa, 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 buddy, whoa. If, if I told you I would give you a suit, I could give you a superpower right now. Like, like, you know, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a superpower. Like, all the gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, all that stuff channels through that, you know, edifying yourself in prayer. I was like, man, you don't really ever know what you're missing out on until you do it. It's like when you have a little kid, they're like, I don't want to go to that. And you're like, no, you're going. And next thing you know, they're like, whoa, yes, baseball, you know, and they're like, I, sometimes you just got to, go you ready yeah let's do it in this manner therefore pray this is in red our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen your so kingdom the very kingdom. first thing he says, he says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's honor right there. Holy. Holy. 
That's giving God. That's just <coughs> honoring Him. You know, giving Him reverence. You know, if I respect someone and I, I give reverence to, to someone, then I'm going to give their word first place in my life. And the very next thing it says, it says, "Your kingdom done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is." And I think that's so powerful. Like he talks about honoring God, and then he goes right into what the kingdom mm-hmm. coming on earth yeah. as it is in heaven. It's like open heavens. And honor is not situational. Honor is not based on what somebody else does. You either honor them or not. That's it. You know, you either have honor for them or not. So sometimes you hear a lot of people, they're mad at God or they're in disagreement with God because God didn't do this and do that. And they're like, ah, that's not honor. Yeah. You honor, you honor the place, right? You honor the place. Even, even in ministry, if you have a minister that makes a mistake, and let's say he repents, like he makes a mistake and he repents, he's like, man, I missed it. Like, I, like you, ha- you still have to honor that position. And if he repents, it's, I mean, it's under the blood anyway. Amen. I guess gone. But a lot mm-hmm. of times people want to, you know, they want to allow that to bring up strife or try to disqualify this person. And this is a person that God has said, no, this, this mm-hmm. man is my apostle. This man is my prophet, my pastor, my teacher, my evangelist. And we have to honor that position. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's if a person's just blatantly living in sin. They don't care. You know, we're still honoring the position, but we're not really agreeing with what they're doing. But if they, if a person repents, I mean, they're they're back yeah. in the right standing before God. Who that's am right. I to say to disqualify them? And that's our human nature, especially in and with leadership, is uh, when somebody's telling us everything we want to hear we're okay with that but when somebody starts telling us some things that make us uncomfortable or we don't want to do or we got to be somewhere we don't want to be or we got to get up when we don't want to get up man we start to pick that you know sometimes we start to pick every well this person does that or this person man just get up just do you know you know um read this it says jesus was teaching on prayer or let's say communicating with god prayer is not to be a monologue but a dialogue so one of the things that I've been doing recently is really just spending that time in prayer, but also pausing. All right, let's just see what the Holy Spirit wants to say. And sometimes, most of the time, I'm not actually hearing like an audible voice or a voice, but I'm just sitting there and in faith, I'm saying, man, I'm spending time with God right now. Like he's doing something in my heart right now. He's doing something in my mind right now. He's yeah. doing something with my emotions. And I'll just speak for a minute. And I'll just sit there and soak for a minute. Sometimes we're gonna we're about to go we're about to transition into this. One of the channels that in your book it talks about. Look, when I say channeling, don't think New Age. New Age is just a perversion of what a way that God speaks. All the stuff they talk about, God did it way before they did. It's just a perversion. The devil can't come up with anything on his own. He just copies. He mimics everything that God does. So channeling is just basically saying, hearing God's voice. That's it. And we are a spirit, so he speaks to us through our spirit. So it's just learning how to tap into the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our spirit like we learned in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That's all it's saying. I know that sometimes you hear channeling and you automatically think, well, he's talking about, you know, talking to, you know, spirits. And No, 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 no. Talking about tapping into the Holy Spirit. You know, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, and really uh, perfect that voice, or, or really teach us how to, to hone in. Yeah, he just supernaturally voice. transfers information that we need. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So learning how to like prayer is not just a monologue. It's not just me speaking the whole time. No, 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 no. I need this. I want that. You know. But it's also you know, just praying and giving your petitions to God and, just, and then just being silent. Mm-hmm. You know, like be still, the, 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 the verse says, be still and know, you know, just being still in his presence and then allowing him to, to speak to you or do whatever he does, you know, just be confident. I'm spending time in God's presence. You know, the word anoint, the word anoint, one of the definitions of anoint means to smear, it means to rub, right? It means contact. So when I'm spending time in His presence, guess what? Holy Spirit's rubbing on me. 
He's, he's saturating me in his presence. He's saturating me in his anointing. And it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Right? We can't do anything without the anointing. Right? It's like Josh just said. The anointing of God, the baptism of the Spirit, is his super on my natural. I need it. I can do everything with it, but I can't do nothing without it. Amen. I promise you. I can do nothing without it. I might be able to do some things in my own strength and my own power, but eventually I'm going to burn out and I'm going to wear out and I'm going to want to give up and I'm going to want to quit. But if he anoints me for the task and his grace is on it, I, I can I, I can endure to the end. Kind of like the Apostle Paul. Like that dude, he was unstoppable. You know, and he was anointed. You know, and he was mm -hmm. prepared for task. So, prayer is not a monologue but a dialogue. Um, in this passage, he shows one of the most important pieces to hearing God's voice and pro progressively becoming sharper to his voice. And that principle is honor. When we honor him, we rever him, we reverence him, he's going to honor us. And that's going to enable an overflow of his presence and power to operate in our lives so that there's an abundance working in us and through us. Amen? And we're going to look at this principle. So, look at Proverbs chapter 3, 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. All right. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. This, this, really, this whole proverb is good, but just go back to verse 7 and 8 and look at that because it kind of ties in with what we were just talking about over in uh, 2 Timothy. Yeah. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Mm. So to fear the Lord, it means to, to reverence Him. It means to honor Him. Mm. Right? So when I choose to flee from youthful lust, Right? I'm choosing to be that vessel of honor. And he says, it's going to be help to my flesh and strength to my bones. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then it says, honor the Lord with your possession, possessions with the first fruits of your increase. Now, you know, this doesn't just have to be, um, this doesn't just have to be our finances. It could be our time. Yeah, time is money. Yeah, you know, it could be our time. Hey, coming in here in the morning, guess what we're doing? First fruits. Definitely first fruits. <laughs> right. And he honors that. Amen. Mm -hmm. He really does. He honors it. That the fact that we're coming up and we're doing this, God honors that. And he's going to, he's, he's releasing things into our life. Um, we're going to look at it later on, like, Jacob, uh, Jacob and I were talking about this morning like these men of God that you see God use, use mightily in the word it wasn't an overnight process you look at Paul, you look at Moses you look at Jesus, we've been talking about Jesus um, we're going to look at later on when we get to it we're going to look at Elisha you know Elisha followed Elijah and served him for 20 years like served him, served him. Yeah. A lot of people were just like, "Well, I want to, I want to step into this anointing. I want to," and God's like, "Okay, let's give it a little time. Mm -hmm. There's some things I need to, there's some things I need to work on, and you know, dealing with character. There's some, there's some mind renewal that needs to take place. Mm -hmm. Really, there's just some submission because our whole lives we've been wanting to do, and I'm speaking from my notice. I'm saying we, my whole life, I wanted to pretty much do my own thing. You know, I never really wanted to submit to anyone. I never really wanted to submit to a leader. Or, and then when I finally sat down and honored that position on this person's life, honored the call that was on their life, that was when God really was able to begin to pour. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 133, it says the anointing flows down when we come together in unity. And really it's talking about being submitted to the head. 
you know, and that's how the anointing they would fall. And he yeah. says, when we honor God and we give him first place, we're submitted to him, we're giving him our first fruit. It says, our barns will be filled with plenty and our vats will overflow with new wine. Isn't that what you just said? Because wine is symbolic of what? The anointing. Yeah. Holy Spirit, the anointing. And it's, it's funny how... God gives us these relationships, like marriage, covenant. He said, this is a mystery, but it's like me being married to you, you guys being married together. It's a mystery, but, you know, it's a comparison. And he, and he says he says in the scripture, and I always use this, he says, how can you say you love a God that you can't see when you hate your brother you can see? Mm -hmm. So he puts these relationships in our lives, and he's like, you want to, how can you say you honor God who you can't see if you can't honor your pastor who's right here? Like you could actually see your pastor's fruit. You know, he's out here doing this thing. He's been doing this thing for 25 years, loving people. You see the fruit of his ministry. Or you hear guys coming back from the center, and they're like, I left because Miss Sherry, she this and she that. But, but every time I go to graduation, 10 out of 12 people are like, love you, Miss Sherry. You're awesome. You're the best. You know, like, how? there's a lack of honor. You know, and if, if you can't, if you can't honor somebody right in front of you that their whole life is dedicated to serving the Lord and you could see them doing it, you you can't honor a God you can't see. Yeah. It's, it's a gut check. It's an equation that he gave us that we could really check ourselves into. You know, are we always coming up against authority? It says all authority is, is given by God, is put in place by God. It says pray for your leaders first, right? So God puts a certain amount of honor, expectation of honor, well, how can we say we could honor a God we can't see, a father we can't see, if we can't honor our pastor, our father, our mother, right? Our 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 bosses are. You know, uh, see how I snuck that in? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyways. So as we're reading this, I'm seeing today what you said back in Second Timothy. You see it? With the vats. Making me think about the vessels. Vats, vessels. That says they what? With the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't just say wine, it says new wine. New wine. Get fresh. Yeah. Every day fresh anointing. His mercies are new every morning. Mm hmm So I'm thinking about a couple of different things. And Josh, you said the Lord's really been speaking to your heart about this. Um, the outflow, it could be a life lived, or it could be in line with what we're talking about, it could be the word of God being released. You know, because he talks about out of our bellies will flow mm -hmm. rivers of living water. So life and death is in what? The power of the tongue. So just really getting those words of life directly from the Holy Spirit and being able to release it in situations in the earth. You know, and this comes from what? Honor. Giving God first place. And now he says, I'm going to release my voice and you're going to be able to go out and you're going to be able to bring about change in this sure. earth, whether it's in your family, whether it's with your, you know, your employees, whether it's on a job site, whether you're at Walmart, gas station, you know, wherever you're at, honoring God and giving his word first place is going to open up that communication line where he can speak to you and then you can release that word. And when you release that word, it brings about change. It brings about life. It brings about revival. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We need to let him have the way we talk, the way we think, and the way we live. That's honoring God. You know. That's honoring him. All of it. You know, I from the beginning when I got saved, I really wanted to I was looking at a lot of time. I was looking at fifty years. I had three I had three charges and each charge carried the two hundred and ten month sentence. And man, I was really I really wanted to get out, honestly. I wanted to get out. I was like, man, I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. So just naturally, I was like, man, I'm going to. I started reading the word, and I was like, man, I want to really want God to move in my situation. And just, I mean, just natural thinking, I was like, if I want him to do some stuff for me, I need to do some stuff for him. And um, But the Holy Spirit started really helping me in some areas. And just from the beginning, I was just like, of course, you know, in, in prison and maybe even at other places, you know, people still sneak pornography in and stuff like that. And um, I just made a decision. I'm not going to look at it. 
I did. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do it, even though everybody else is looking at it. Most, not everybody in the church, but all the people that were just in the world, and that's expected of them, right? But I just made a decision. I am not going to, I'm going to honor God with my eyes, right? And I really started out doing that in prison, but then when I came home, I brought it with me. You know what I mean? It became a habit. And really, it's just honoring God with my eyes. And to this date, I have not looked at pornography on the computer. And even like going down the road, like you'll see, or wherever you're at, maybe you'll see some beautiful ladies, right? And I will not, I'm just... Eyes front. Yeah. I just honor God with my eyes. Like, I'm not going to look at that. Why am I going to look at that? I've got a beautiful wife at home. I've got, girl, I've got little girls. Like, I love God. I'm going to honor him with my eyes daily. And I'll tell you what, that's just like a great feeling when you can just like, no, not going to look at it. Not today, Satan. I'm not going to do it. You know, and I'm telling you, man, when you do that, when you honor him, man, he can really, really entrust you with the assignment that he has for your life. Like to, to a whole nother level. And he's really able to deposit some things in your life that are going to really cause you to stand out, you know, for the kingdom really cause you to make an impact um so josh now we're about out of time we got like one minute i want to say this too like i don't know i just feel like the spirit's leading pornography doesn't have to be a battle it doesn't have to be you can say no I, I'm, I'm standing up in front of you as a witness you can say no to that Anybody that's watching or anybody that's in here that struggled with that, you can say no to that. You have, the Holy Spirit gives you power over that. When Jesus came, the Bible says he overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil, and he sat down. He did that for us. He won victory in all of those areas for us. He didn't have to do it for himself. He did it for us. And now that victory belongs to us. In the same way he said no, we can say no through the power of the Holy Spirit. I've heard people say that, well, that's every man's battle. No, it's not. I said before no, it's you not. Right. No. Yeah, I have, that has not been my battle. No. Not saying I have, there hasn't been other things, but that doesn't have to be a battle. That can be, you can put that thing down, the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, through God's grace, I stopped smoking. When I got locked up in 1998, I was smoking about a pack and a half a day of cigarettes. Yeah. And I got in there, couple months it was just slowly dwindling down the amount of cigarettes that I smoked and one day I kept watching this guy and he kept picking up these butts like it was literally nothing but a filter and smoking these filters and I was just like thinking to myself and God was just like man you see how bad this dude has got to smoke like he would give yeah he I mean he would give, yeah he would give like his food, he would give his tray, like, give me a cigarette. And I was just like, God just showed me like the the, the addictive side of it. And I was just like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to do that anymore. And I was like, Lord, I need your help with this. Because I was smoking a pack and a half a day. And he gave me victory over that. <laughs> and I haven't smoked. Like, I haven't smoked since 99. Wow. He helped me with Thank it. God. So, just little things, man. I know I'm kind of bad one, but. All right. 1 Timothy, we're going to close out. 1 Timothy 5.17. There's nothing in your in your life right now, no area in your life that Christ hasn't paid to give you victory in those areas. Amen? Amen. Let the elders who rule, rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. This is kind of going back to what you said about leadership. You know, it's really giving that, giving that honor to see the place. You know, and when you do that, man, it really opens up the door for God. When you honor what God has put in place, then God honors yeah. you. And what does honor look like? Don't put your mouth on that person. That's one. If you got something negative to say, shut your mouth. Don't. Do not talk about people. Yeah. Honor, honor them. And maybe instead of seeing what you need, 
Maybe see what they need. Is there any way that I could help you do what you're doing? Can I come up under what you're doing because I see an anointing on your life? Can I, I'd like to get some of that. I'd like to rub on some of that. Is there any way that I, and that's how Elijah and Eliza worked. He came up under him and he said, I, I, man, I'll bring your food. I'll, I'll clean your, I'll clean your, uh, uh, Peapot, I'll I'll bring your clothes. I'll do whatever you send me to do, bro. Because I just want to be near that anointing, and that's what honor looks like. And and if he says, "Hey, we're going here," and your belly hurt or you don't feel like it, you you still that's what honor looks like. You still do it, and and God's looking at you do that, and He's saying, "Okay, this is a dude I could trust. Let me mantle him now. Let me put this on him now, because I could trust that no matter what he feels like or what he thinks." He's going to do what I say. That's what honor looks like. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's more. But, you know. <laughs> I want to say this too about just your word as a man of God. You know, Ephesians 4 it says that we're to put away lying. You know, uh, I've noticed today a lot of people, they say stuff and they just, it just doesn't mean anything. And we've all been guilty of it, you know. But if we tell somebody we're going to do something, do it. You know, let our yes be what? Yes, yes. and our no's be no's. Integrity. Integrity. Now, stuff comes up and I realize that. Give somebody a phone call. Hey, this happened. Cool. You know, don't just leave them hanging and, you know, a week later you call and you're like, well, I thought we were supposed to meet the other day. What happened? Oh, this, this, and this. Let people know. Communicate. But if you say you're gonna do something, be a man of your word. Amen. Follow through. Oh, um, all right. Malachi three ten. We're closing out with this. Ten and Says here we go. Bring all the ties into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be not room enough to receive it. Amen. So, it goes back to that Proverbs 3.10, honor the Lord with your possessions. Okay. Now, I want to say, I want to look at it from the aspect just to kind of encourage you guys, you know, when he's talking about tithing, I believe he's definitely talking about money and his resources, but I also believe that you can tithe your time. Yeah. You can give your best. You can give your first fruit. And when you do, he says he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that he can't even contain. You know, and this could be financially or this could be spiritually. Mm -hmm. Right? Think about walking under open heavens. That means all of heaven is back in you in whatever situation you're stepping into. And that all comes to you. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's and that spiritual blessing, that spiritual growth is a gain. Right? Yes. So it's saying yes. of everything that you get, give first fruits of it. So it's just back to being poured out. You know, what Dave said earlier or what I was talking about, like if God has given you increase spiritually, man, you need to be pouring that out. Look for avenues. Yeah, look for avenues. <coughs> Jacob was asking me a question. He said, how do you how do you talk for an hour every day? Hmm. It was time. It was time I spent with the Lord. I honored God. I honored the men of God that God put over my life. They said, hey, read this book. Read these books in the Bible. Study this. You know, and I would go back and I would do it. I would have a class. I would take notes. I've got binders of notes like this. Honestly, I've got several binders of notes that are just like this thick. I've got one in my office where I would take notes. I would go back that night and I would read over it and be like, what did pastor talk about today? Or what did, so, what did brother so-and-so talk about today? And I would remind myself, okay? And I would go back and I would, I would, I would find it in the Word. I would study it out. I would... You know, make sure that it was, you always want to confirm the word, you know, especially if there's anything questionable, you want to go back and you want to find it in the word. If it's something that's benefit, that's going to benefit me and it's going to benefit others, 
I wanted to get hold of that. Because now I want to be able to find somebody that I can pour out. Right? Because as I pour out, what's going to happen? God's going to be back up. It's a process. <coughs> That's right. And the Holy Spirit just brings those things to your remembrance. While you're up there yeah. Too, right? God honors that. When you, when you go back and you get and you spend time in His Word and you study and you pray and you read the Word, and the next thing you know, over a couple, you know, a series of weeks, months, years, decades, now He could just you've honored Him, so He's going to honor you. Mm-hmm. Like I started, Josh brought me on in 2019, right? I rededicated my life in 1999 is when I started seeking after God. So that's 20 years that I've spent. Now, in the beginning, it wasn't anything like it was in the end. There were still a little rough edges. You know, I still didn't really, I wasn't disciplined to get in the Word like I should. But there was a progression. You know, but if you see something on somebody's life, like Joshua said, and you want it, you go to him and you say, hey, how do you get to where you're at? And you copy it. You know, and it's just the simplicity of spending time and honoring God spending time in the Word, spending time in prayer, and God's going to honor you. He's going to, you know, he's going to promote you. He's going to put you in a position. To, you, can, you can get up here and just trust out of your relationship with Him. Like, He's going to, he's going to give me the words to speak. You know, He's going to flow through me. Because he, I've honored Him, and I know He's going to honor me. Amen. <coughs> That's for anybody. Every bit of that's done, by the way, every bit of that's done by the grace of God, right? Amen. Spending time with him, prayer, the word, God's grace enables you to do that. It's not your own strength, look at me. No, that's the grace of God. You know, you come to God and say, hey, I need your help. This is what I desire, and then his grace is going to empower you to do whatever he's calling you to do, whatever he's asking you to walk out. He even gives you the desire to do it. That's right. It's like he just fully equips you with everything. Amen. Anybody got anything? Yeah. Uh, pray for my wife.